So, you want to learn how to jump with the flare gun in TF2. My first piece of advice. Don't bother. There was once a time, in Team Fortress the Second, where it was possible to shoot flare projectiles through thin walls. This was done by moving in as close as possible to the wall, and aiming at an angle that would cause the projectile to spawn inside the wall, allowing it to continue travelling through to the other side. Flare projectiles no longer behave this way, however it would seem in their efforts to patch this bug, the TF2 team has replaced it with a different bug. Now, shooting a flare into a wall will produce a small explosion that can only damage you, the shooter, similar to the detonator. And as we all know in Team Fortress 2, explosions are a valuable source of knockback. Indeed, it is possible to exploit this with the flare gun or the man melter to perform jumps that would normally be impossible without the detonator, for example. However, this does not necessarily mean that it is practical to do so. Allow me to elaborate on that as I explain how to do this. Step 1. Find a wall. Not that one. That one doesn't work. Think again. You'll find that not every surface you try this on will allow the flare to explode, even when aiming at the correct angle. Flares will only explode when fired into a solid brush or displacement. Therefore, shooting into objects with a model, such as this bus, or this lamppost, or this sign, will not produce the explosion that allows you to jump. And then you have perfectly good brushes that you just can't seem to get close enough to to shoot the flare inside. The reason for this in most cases is because the wall or the surface is not parallel enough with the sides of your collision hull, which is a cube that cannot rotate. Therefore, if the wall collides with the corner of the collision hull, too much distance is kept between the wall and the firing point to spawn it inside. You may also come across brush walls that align perfectly parallel with your collision hull, yet are covered with a thin clip or invisible wall that prevents you from drawing close enough to shoot the flare inside. In cases like this, you might still be able to jump by shooting into any protruding corners or map geometry, but this only further complicates what is already a fairly precise and difficult trick. Now that you've found your wall, it's time for step two. Aim. The exact angle you need to aim will depend on what kind of jump you're trying to do, but you first need to understand that the flare can only spawn inside the wall while aiming in a very narrow range of directions. If you were to depict it as a window on the wall, it would look something like a circle, centered slightly below and away from your position in the direction opposite your view model that is, left by default, or right if you flip view models. I should mention that the window is much smaller and higher up in an uncrouched state. However, this is mostly irrelevant, as you should almost always be crouching when attempting to jump like this. Now, to get the most out of your jump, you generally want to aim as low as the wall will allow you. If you want to prioritize speed and distance over height, you should aim further away along the wall, but preferably still close to the bottom rim of the window. There is a point of diminishing returns, which also applies to regular blast jumping, but you also need to remember to adjust your aim high enough to keep the flare inside the wall. Again, the exact direction you should aim will depend on what kind of jump you're trying to do. The explanation I've just given is intended to help you form a mental image to use as reference for that. Step 3. Jump. Once you've touched the wall and found your angle, all that's left is the jump itself. Remember to crouch jump so the flare spawns in the correct position. Ideally, this means crouching before jumping, although it can still work the other way around. Now fire the flare immediately after the jump input, almost at the exact same time, but slightly later. If done correctly, the explosion will have amplified the height and speed of your jump, kinda like a tiny, pathetic rocket jump. You can strafe along the wall before the jump to increase speed and distance, or help influence the direction you get launched. Air strafing during the jump is also useful for wrangling your momentum towards your destination. Step 4. Practice. Flare gun jumping is not something that you can easily do on the fly. Probably the main reason you would ever do this, besides just for the fun of it, 
would be to reach locations otherwise inaccessible, maybe for a positional advantage or the sheer element of surprise. Some other potential applications might include rolling out from spawn to reach the front lines faster, or maybe an aggressive lunge to get into flamethrower or melee range. However, if you can't make your jump every time on command, you're just wasting time and resources that would have been better spent on a more traditional game plan. That's why, if you're ever hoping to use this effectively, you'll have to put in several hours of practice. With that said, it's time to join a server and... Step 5. Don't bother. Any time spent seriously trying to make use of this trick would probably be better spent punching yourself in the dick. Sure, it's not completely useless, but the opportunities it would give you any significant advantage in are so infrequent that the practice required to get consistent enough to make it count would probably be better spent on something even as situational as extinguishing pyros, for example, not to mention something more fundamental like air blasting or aiming flares. Arguably, it might possibly help you in an emergency situation where you have no other options, so you might as well try one. But again, it's not going to work unless you've practiced how to do it and researched where you can do it. Which again, takes time that you could have spent practicing fundamentals, which would probably help you avoid that situation in the first place. And you know, maybe it's not in my place to decide what's practical or not. I haven't played CompTF2 for about five years now. But if I'm still failing 4 out of 5 attempts on jumps that I've spent hours practicing already, I find it hard to imagine anyone else would have the patience to seriously try this. You have to keep in mind that this is still a bug, and has a possibility of being patched at some point, even if you just want to do it for fun, for the gimmick. It's so useless and inconsistent that you're probably just going to end up frustrated more than anything. I would know because this is what happened to me. If you insist on trying this despite what I've said, I commend you, you are stronger than me, but also a fool. Thank you for watching my video to the end. This took a lot longer to make than I thought it would, mostly because trying to do flare jumps for the past month to minimal success has put me in a bit of a sour mood, so I hope that this video, which is the culmination of my suffering, can benefit you in some way. I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel if you are not already, and you can follow me on Twitter, if you like. I think that's about it. Thanks again, and goodbye.